With HBD though, if we create hive bonds, it gets very interesting because you're not creating any debt because the HBD is actually the debt instrument itself. I think there's great potential in this. DNS Media. Boom, welcome everybody. Welcome to CTT podcast where we talk about community token talk web3 and the latest in everything to do with uh, network states so uh, we've got on the show this week brian of london and we've also got the famous taskmaster on the show hbd is a unicorn in cryptocurrency right now it stands out from the crowd it is an algorithmic stable coin a base layer algorithmic sta- stable coin and it's on probably the most decentralized blockchain outside of Bitcoin that there is. To any of these other things, they're not real decentralized. So there's no institution, there is no company, there's no corporation, there's no foundation. We have something that piggybacks off the dollar, but is not a dollar. It is not backed by a dollar. There are no U.S. Treasuries involved in this. There's no custodian account. With HBD, though, if we create hive bonds, it gets very interesting because you're not creating any debt because the HBD is actually the debt instrument itself. I think there's great potential in this. Uh, for, for me, one of the things that I, I think is the most revolutionary things about HBD is the fact that it can be transformed into a bonding system on Hive, so you can stake your HBD for a certain period of time and then receive a higher APR as a result of that. It just doesn't exist in crypto anyway. And so that is just incredibly powerful. As long as the HBD stays small compared to Hive, it's a sustainable thing to do. People are not buying Hive for the APR. People are buying Hive and powering it up. We need people to hold and have Hive powered up. And I think that the reward for, for holding Hive and Hive power should be the same or better than the passive reward for HBD. Hive's at 30 cents, I believe it's going to go to 60, 90, a dollar 20, 2 dollars, whatever. That's why people go after high. We need to get liquidity out there. We don't have enough liquidity in HBD. Uh, every time you go and speak to a big investor, you 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 can't get them in because there's just not enough liquidity. What you really want to see is you want to see a very 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 high market cap with Hive. It's just going to take years and years and years. The goal here should be to build at least a primitive bonding system where we can have a long enough lockup to then be justified to be tokenized on the second layer and traded. And there you go, wham, bam, you got a bond system. Definitely in the future, there'll be a way to basically have the shop attendant or that let's say a coffee, a coffee shop, someone selling coffee. They'll be able to select from a list of items that are listed on the blockchain that that shop sells, click add it to the basket, and then it'll present a QR code. They'll just be able to scan the QR code of that basket, press confirm, and it will just send the hive, the HBD straight across. It's it's a great process, you know, and I mean, nothing else can do this. One thing that we've learned, planning high fest, you're going around the stores, how easy it is to just get them to accept crypto. They're a lot more open these days. It used to be like foreign tech, but all of you know, most of them have heard of crypto nowadays. While we're on the subject of high fest, and just go and do a few more um, excursions and things like that for the few days after High Fest. So definitely interested if you want to stay on. Um, we'll be doing a few more interesting things uh, around around the area. Everyone that comes here wants to stay, so it's just a warning. 